point in the scatter plot and figure out how far vertically is that point above or below the line. Right? That we call that a residual. If the point was below the line, uh, it'll come out as a negative residual. If the point's above the line, it comes out as a positive residual. So basically, um, you'll get, usually when you look at a residual uh, graph or a residual chart, we'll kind of get into that maybe next time, you'll see a bunch of negative and positive distances. And those are referring to the points that are below the line and the points that are above the line. Uh, <clears throat> I actually had Staccato calculate the standard deviation of the residual errors for uh, this data and we got 37.61. Uh, it's important to note that residuals are vertical distance, vertical. And that standard deviation of the residual errors is also vertical distance. So it's going to always be at the same units as whatever your Y is. Remember how I told you in the beginning that Y is always the focus of a lot of the calculations? So it's really the vertical distance. So that means it's in dollars in this problem. So basically this is, this is um, going to be in dollars. The standard deviation of residual errors is always the same units as the Y. Now what is it? Well it actually tells me two important things. First of all it tells me how far the points are from the line vertically. The average distance from the line vertically. So it's kind of like the average distance from the line. Just um, uh, so the um, how far I can, it can kind of show me how far my points are from the line, especially if you got a thousand data points and you're like looking at it, it's like a big uh, cloud of points, and you, you want to know how far the points are from the line. But but not just that, it actually tells me the average prediction error, and that's actually very important. Uh, correlation regression studies often are used to make predictions, to predict what's going to happen, what do we think is going to happen uh, in the stock market, or what do we think is going to happen for the profits of this company. Right? Those are predictions. So this tells me how much error could be in those predictions. So standard deviation of residual errors in this problem came out to $37.61, or $37.61. So, the points on the scatter plot are on average 37.61 from the line. And if I try to predict the profits of the company based on the temperature, I could be off by about $37.61. Okay, that's kind of the way you want to think of standard deviation of the residuals. All right, now what, let's get into how does this a regression line, line of best fit, line of least squares. How does that actually get calculated? Right? How does that get calculated? Um, it's not as simple as in an algebra class where they tell you, oh, the slope is going to just be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Well, that, that works great when you got two points. That doesn't work great when you got a thousand points. Okay? So if you have a thousand data points in a scatter plot and you're trying to find the line that best fits the data, uh, there's, a, there's basically a couple major um, formulas that we use. One of the things is you want to figure out the mean of the x values and the standard deviation of the x values. Sometimes you'll see this as x bar and sx. S with this tiny little x next to it just means the standard deviation of the x or the explanatory variable. And then you also want the mean and standard deviation of the y's. So the mean of the y's is sometimes referred to as y bar. S with a little tiny y next to it is often referred to as the standard deviation of the y bars. Um, I, I had a computer calculate this. I'm not going to calculate those by hand. It takes a long, long time to calculate those by hand. But if I go ahead and have those numbers, so the mean of the x's was uh, 21.75 degrees Celsius. The standard deviation of the x's was 4.062 degrees Celsius. Mean of the Y's was $419.25. Mean uh, standard deviation of the Y's, $81.22. Now if I have those numbers, and I know R, I can actually figure out the, the perfect line, the line of best fit. So uh, the formula for the slope, now first of all with slope, um, what letter do you use? Oftentimes in stat programs you'll see slope denoted as a B with a little subscript 1 next to it. I know a lot of you are used to Y equals MX plus B, right? M was the slope in your algebra classes. But in stats, usually we denote it as B0. 
I'm sorry, B, not B0, B1. So B1 is slope. So the, the formula for slope is R times the standard deviation of Y is divided by the standard deviation of X. So if you think about, remember your old formula of slope, uh, maybe in an algebra class, was rise over run, right? Change in Y divided by change in X. Same idea. But now we're using standard deviation of Y, which is the kind of the change in Y or the variability in Y divided by the variability in X. But it turns out standard deviation is always positive. So if all you did was standard deviation divided by standard deviation, you'd actually always get a positive slope, even if the line was going down. So the, tri the actual missing component is this R value. This R value, the correlation coefficient, is sort of the, 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 the part of the formula that makes this go. Remember, when R is positive, the, slope, the line will go up. When the R is negative, the line will go down. So that's what gives us the positive and negative. And it also measures in terms of how far points are from the line. So in this problem, I'm going to do the, the R value, 0.9034, times the standard deviation of the Y's, 81.222, divided by the standard deviation of the X, 4.062. If I work that out, I get 18.06. Well, that's great. The computer can do that in a split second. So, you know, my calculation, great. We, at least we can see how it was calculated, but what does it mean, right? Remember, everything in stats is all about explaining. What does it mean? What is it telling me? Okay? Well, let's go back to our definition of slope. Like, you, you probably maybe seen in algebra class that the slope was sort of the, again, the rise over the run, right? Or, um, but a good way to think about it is, here's the kind of the statistics, more better statistics definition of slope. The amount of decrease or increase in y per one unit of x. Actually, that's the same definition I use in algebra classes. Um, but it's how much y is going up or down for every one unit of x. So if x increases one unit, how much does y go up or down? Now, if the slope was positive, the y would be going down. If the slope is negative, the uh, y would be going up. Reverse that. <laughs> The amount, so if slope is positive, right, the line is going up from left to right. If slope is negative, the line is going down from left to right. So if the slope came out negative, you know it's a decrease in uh, y. And if the slope is positive, you know it's an increase in y. Okay? So, and think of it as one, if, I, if x goes up one unit, how much does y go up or down? So let's kind of think about this for a second. Again, slope is often called a rate of change. It has both units involved. It's going to have dollars and degrees Celsius in the explanation. Remember this 81.222, the standard deviation of the y's? Well, that was dollars. And this 4.062 was the standard deviation of the x's? Well, that's degrees Celsius. So you can kind of get this idea that this number, first of all, came out positive. Right? That's very important. This was a positive number. That means the y is increasing. So for every one unit of x, so for every one degree Celsius, uh, the profits, daily profits of the swimsuit store are increasing about 18.06 on average. Okay, that's kind of a good way to think about it. All right, now what about the y-intercept? Just like in algebra, you have to actually calculate the slope first before you figure out the y-intercept. Because if you notice in the formula, it actually has b1 in the formula, which is actually the slope. So the y-intercept is b0. We often call this the y-intercept b0. So the formula for the y-intercept is y-hat minus b1 times x-bar. Sorry, so y-bar minus b1 x-bar. So this is the mean of the y's minus the slope times the mean of the x's. Now you do have to do the multiplication first because order of operations, right? Multiplication comes before subtraction. So if I kind of plug in our numbers here and my 18.06, my slope, my y, uh, sorry, my mean of the y's was $419.25 minus the slope. 18.06 times the mean of the x is 21.75, and we get 26.4. 
Okay, I think when I had calculated on Stat Cato, they got 26.3. Stat Cato is definitely going to be more accurate than my calculation here because they're, I'm, not, I'm rounding too much. Stat Cato and computer programs in general won't round that much and they'll get a little better accuracy. But what is this number telling me? Well, if you guys remember from your algebra, uh, algebra days, the slope is the y value when x is 0. But you actually want to make a distinction between y values that are actual y values, these numbers in the data set, versus what we call predicted y values, line, not points that are on the actual line. So in stats, the, you have the actual y values as the actual numbers in the, in the y uh, response variable data set versus what the line predicts. The line actually is the prediction. So um, if you remember, the y-intercept is not one of these points where the x is 0. It's actually where the line crosses. In fact, if I kind of continue this line, it kind of looks like it'll cross at about 26 there on the, on the y-axis. So it, when x was 0, the line kind of crosses the y-axis at um, to about 26, so 26.4. But it's the line, it's the predicted y value, it's not the actual y value, it's not one of these, it's, the, it's where the line crosses. So we often say the y-intercept b0 is the predicted y value when x is 0. Now we have a special symbol in stats. Uh, if you put a little hat on the y, y hat, that means predicted y value. It's a prediction of y, or it's kind of a point that's on the line itself, versus these are the actual y, which is the y no hat on it. Okay? Uh, by the way, the residual, the vertical distance, is the actual y minus the predicted y. That's kind of the way you can judge vertical relationships. So what does this tell me again? Well, again, it's the y when x is 0, right? So, it's, so if, if it was 0 degrees Celsius, the predicted profits for the swimsuit would be $26.40, about 40 cents. So, um, so that's kind of the idea with the y-intercept. So now our regression line, if you guys remember y equals mx plus b, right, in, in uh, algebra classes, well, in stats, we usually write it the other way around. Why have?